Okay, Michael, you're on. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm assuming everyone can hear me. If you can't, let us know. And I'm trying to get some things off my screen here. There we go. So there's nothing on my, if you're not seeing anything on my screen right now, you're good. Uh, so last week we took a bird's eye view of how the flexibility of SketchUp and CabinetSense can help us to not only create, can help us to market and produce our products. And that's particularly true when it comes to furniture and cabinet making. So today I'd like to take a closer look at a few projects uh, that I use SketchUp and CabinetSense for, and then we're going to create a small cabinet. We'll nest the parts, apply tool paths, and create our G-code for manufacturing. So I know we have many software choices. I expect they're all capable of designing cabinetry for kitchens and baths and whatever we want to do. But as I segue today into the project that, uh, that I want to share, I want to show just a couple of jobs again. I want to uh, look at some of the current jobs that I'm doing and show you the flexibility of the design process and illustrate how I use that same model for effective marketing. Um, I've had folks ask me about that. You know, how do you use SketchUp for marketing? And I'll just show this is going to be very brief. We'll go through this rather rapidly. So the first cabinet, so this is a, a guest bath and a hallway, and we were asked to do uh, a few little projects here to make this more useful for the client. And I think I mentioned before that you can use the scenes to quickly navigate through the project, and if you have a uh, what do you want to call it, like a screen uh, uh, video where you can take videos of the screen. I, I, I understand that even I think the new versions of Windows have that built in, but you can also use uh, something like Camtasia or Snagit. They do a very good job of it. And so you'll be able to start these scenes and just by clicking on the scene or running them automatically, you're going to be able to walk your client through the job. And so here we have the wine cabinet to the left, uh, over on the right-hand side, we have a little area that uh, is going to be used for storage. Perhaps a broom closet might be uh, useful. And uh, then we're going to go forward and we can look into the bathroom uh, where we're going to be adding and building cabinets in there as well. All right. So let's take a look at another one. and. Um, I want to show you this one here. I saw a friend of mine in the class tonight, so he's gonna, he'll probably smile when he sees this because he knows this job. Uh, so this is another thing that we can do too. If you have a 3D mouse, you can easily navigate through your jobs and do a narration as you're going through the job to let your customer know what they're looking at, why you did what you did, uh, and how you're trying to solve the issues that they have or that they've hired you uh, to uh, do for them. You can remove door layers so that you can look inside of cabinets and get a little bit better look at uh, your job. Now I'm going to show you another one that you've seen probably many times. So this is the vanity cabinet that we did quite a while ago, but I think What's important about this is start showing a little bit different part of this cabinet sense and SketchUp suite that we use. I like that we made this cabinet on the three by five Maverick. I mean, that was really an awesome experience. That was our goal when we started. And so uh, I also like that not only did we build this using cabinet sense tools, but we were also able to use SketchUp tools. So it's not often that you can find software that you can easily design a base like this. And this is a base that completely represents how we're going to build it uh, on our turning center. So these, these corners were radiused on the turning center. The same with the brick home. It was done the same way. 
So this is to scale, and this is the way it's going to be created on our CNC. A lot of satisfaction being able to put that into our drawing as well. So we create the part in SketchUp and then transform it into a cabinet sense part. It then becomes our library, uh, part of our library, so that we can use it in future jobs. Um, this cabinet is really very simple when you think about it. So it's really just a it's just a um, frameless three frameless boxes, and then these special woodworking parts that we're able to add to it. I think I need to close some screens here, so I'm going to close this. Okay, so I'd like to show you what we can do in Cabinet Sense, and this is where I think the flexibility really comes uh, into play. So this really started from that same cabinet. It is the same vanity cabinet, but we made a few changes to it, including a little bit of a wild color here, right? So uh, this is a mahogany wood with a nutmeg stain on it. But this cabinet was easily transformed from what you saw before into this, just using our cabinet sense tools. And um, furthermore, what we're able to do is change the function of it. So if this is a desk, for instance, you may want to use this for some lateral files, uh, maybe a place to store envelopes and stamps to pay the bills. So it works very well. This really started out as the same cabinet and making some very simple changes, relatively simple changes, we we're able to change it to a whole different look. And if we want to, we can also go here. Oops, I guess I brought it in here already. So we can go over here to the material palette and if our customer says, wow, that's quite the color that you have there, we can use the material palette going down to our material that we have chosen for the outside of this cabinet, which is the red mahogany. We can actually go in and change the stain. Now, these are happen to be uh, Minwax stains, but you can put any kind of stains or colors that you want to import. And so uh, let's choose, uh, I believe it's the chestnut let's see what that looks like if that's a little bit more appealing so there you go a little bit richer still works with our uh ubinga top so uh kind of an interesting way though that we can work and by the way these feet here can also be drawn in sketchup become part of your library and can be turned in Ccamp. So we can take dimensions off of these and be able to fill out uh, everything that we would need to, to be able to machine these. So next, I'd like to just show you um, a couple of pictures from some clients who just started using Cabinet Sense. We saw one last week. And really, those, that was just so inspiring to me. I asked if he would share those pictures with me again because it was really some beautiful work. So here's Elvin's cabinet that he built. This is an elevation probably out of cabinet sense. Here he is putting it together, testing things out. That's always a wise idea, but you can start to see just the size and scale of this. Uh, for a first job uh, in Cabin Sense, I, I feel like it's very, very exceptional. And then we saw this picture here, and wow, what a beauty that is. Very difficult to do, too, because he had some geometry here that was on site, and he had to work around that geometry and make this fit. And another client who has just started using Cabin Sense a few months ago. Now, he is a cabinet maker, uh, but I was very impressed with the work that he did also. And I'll just kind of go through these quickly to give you a little bit of an idea. 
of the type of work that we can easily design uh, in cabinet sense. And again, this is, uh, I believe, a first job using cabinet sense. And that's his company. And just one more, if you uh, don't mind. Uh, I think it's really worth seeing just what other people do. It's inspiring to see their work. And uh, here's another one. Now, he does space frame cabinetry. And he uses a style that we've, uh, I don't want to say, I don't know if we've invented it or not, but we do frameless cabinetry or Euro boxes that are all exposed inside of the face frame. So if you open that door, you'll see the very edges of the Euro cabinetry. So that's the control that we're able to come up with and make uh, using cabinet sense. Hey, Michael. Yes. Can you explain, the, sorry, I'm not a cabinet maker, but can you explain the difference between the frameless and the face frame cabinet? Yeah, sure. I mean, with a face frame cabinet like you see right here, and, and that's something that we're really used to is face frame cabinetry because it's been made here in the United States almost exclusively, it seems like, for, for decades. And in a face frame cabinet, what we have is this face frame around the perimeters. And then we have the doors. In this case, these are inset doors. So these doors are inset inside the face frame. Um, a lot of face frame work is done where we're going to overlay the doors on top of the face frame. That would be something that, you you know, we see a lot at the big box stores, and uh, that's been around for years. With frameless cabinetry, we don't have any face frame at all. Uh, it's just the carcass itself, but we use other methods to decorate, and I dare say that probably we could do a frameless and a face frame cabinet uh, design, put them side by side, and some people wouldn't be able to recognize the difference actually. So, in fact, in this picture, I can see that there's actually frameless cabinets in this uh, kitchen. Yeah, so here below, this is this is face frame up above, and this is frameless below. So, some very nice work. So now I'd like to start and design a project with you guys. And uh, so let's uh, bring out a blank screen here. And because I, I wanted to show you those kitchens and baths because we know that we can do that. So what else can we do though? Because some folks have a small machine. Maybe they wanna make small components or furniture like pieces. So I'd like to show you how I use cabinet sense to be able to do some of those things. So I use Component Finder to sort and keep my, compo my components in place. And I've got a library that I've set up for today. I'm gonna push this off screen onto another monitor just so it doesn't cover the screen we're on. First thing I'm gonna do is just bring out a base cabinet. It's easy as clicking on it and bringing it into place. Now this base cabinet is already made for my manufacturing style. It's frameless at this point in time. Uh, it's got blind dados, it's got you know, the other things that I would use in designing a cabinet. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of this cabinet. So the width being 16, that's we're going to work with that for now. And the height of it, I'm going to change that to 19.5. I'm going to change the depth of it to 18. And I'm going to change the mounting height to 6.5. And you'll see why in a minute. Now, you see we've got a shelf floating outside the cabinet. That's because we had quite a lot of shelves inside this cabinet. So we're gonna get rid of some of them. All right, so there we're at one shelf. And you know, while I'm at it, I'm gonna take this shelf here and I'll just center it in the cabinet. All right. Now, this 
cabinet box right now is melamine. But for the project that we're doing, I don't think that's the right material. And I know a lot of you probably say it's not the right material for any job, but that's another topic. So what we're going to do here is let's go over to our project component. And I'm just going to move this. Well, I guess I can leave it here for now. So what I'm going to do is just change some of the material. And I'm going to make this one oh, start it out with white oak. How's that? And uh, for the carcass, we're going to make that maple. And the other side is going to be maple also. And it's going to have a plywood core. And we'll apply. All right, and then we'll go back to our perspective here. So my machine is really slowing down here. Sorry about this. Okay, and you can see right away that we have been able to make some changes to this cabinet. All right. The next thing we're going to do, if you got the email today, you saw that we were going to build a bow front cabinet. Now, for a lot of software, that's really a challenge. And it's a little bit of a challenge here, too. But I think we can be able to pull it off here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this cabinet into the edit mode. Click on the right end. I'm going to do an inset of the front of two and a quarter inches. And I'll do an inset of this side as well two and a quarter inches. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this top shelf or the, the top of the cabinet. In order to do that, I'm gonna click on it to get into the edit mode. If I click on it and I see all these dots, then I know I'm in the edit mode. We'll take an arc tool. A line tool just to finish off our vector here. push pull tool, or actually, I think it's like a jigsaw. We'll just jigsaw that off. Cut that one off too. And I don't know, maybe I wasn't very good at my cut here, so we'll use a little sandpaper. Get rid of our line. And let's quickly do the same thing with the bottom, the deck. Pull. Oops. And there we go. And I think we should do something with our shelf as well. Again, that not meat needs to go into the edit mode. Okay, so now we have our carcass pretty much ready to go. We'll get rid of some of these reference lines. Let's put our door back on. And well, my goodness, that isn't going to work very well. Let's see what we can do with this here. Oh man, my. Computer's not that behaving very well.
Okay, so we're going to select the door. And I've told you about extensions before. They're really wonderful things in SketchUp. And I think folks sometimes miss just the enormous capabilities that are available in SketchUp if you know the extensions. We're going to use this extension here. We'll take this extension. We'll move the door backwards. But I want it to move backwards one inch. Okay. Starting to look a little bit like a bow front cabinet. Michael, what, what is that extension called? Yeah, that's called uh, True Bend. And uh, True Bend is Thank done you. by TomTom. TomTom is, I believe, from Sweden. He's an amazing developer, amazing teacher. I just had the fortune of being in some of his classes up in Vancouver about a month or so ago. Um, so we're starting to get somewhere with this cabinet relatively quickly when you think about it. Next thing we'll do is let's bring in here a leg. Oh. And I probably have alignment turned off on this leg and that's why it's behaving like it is. It's not snapping into place because I'm gonna manually put it where I want it to be. I thought I was. So I have it there. And now what I want to do is I'm going to lock it along the green axis so that I can maybe touch the front corner of this door. And we'll put it right here. Then we can copy this leg, bring it to the back. And then let's grab a panel. And we'll put our panel here in place. All right, we need to change some sizes here. So we remember that that cabinet was 19 and a half inches tall. And we remember that the mounting height of it, so we want to get it off the floor a little bit. So we'll put it up here to six and a half. That should get it up to the same height as the rest of the cabinet. We have other ways of changing the sizes of parts though. So if I tap on the S key for scale, I can also scale this. So I'll grab the little red marker there, come back to this corner and click. And I'm not sure why it's inch and a half. Let's just trim it down a little bit. And then we can grab the cabinet again for the, the panel. We'll bring it right in, watch to this. And then we'll move it one more time. This way we can type in that we want it back a quarter of an inch. So we have a quarter of an inch reveal. Now, speaking of uh, extensions, we're going to use another extension here just because it's so much fun to use. So I'm going to double click on this door. We'll go pick a little uh, bead molding, let's say. And uh, let's turn this also to white oak. Now, Profile Builder will actually allow you to build any kind of molding that you want, any profile. It's all your choice. You, all you do is just draw a two-dimensional uh, drawing and then turn that into a profile and it's ready for you to use. So I do that with many of my moldings that I know that I am going to use the, regularly so that I have them in my library. And all we're doing is just clicking and extruding that molding out onto the job. A lot easier than trying to draw something like that in a lot of these programs. So very, very simple and very useful. Um, another thing that we could do is we can 
I've built this cabinet before and I've used just uh, done this on the turning center, do the tapering on the turning center, create this little groove. Now, it looks actually pretty good just to leave this groove without anything in it. I maybe don't make it quite so deep, uh, maybe a little shallower, but I often put a bead in it as well. So we can go back to our library, let's grab the bead. Uh, I'm going to change the orientation of it here a little bit. And you see that little red mark, that tells uh, the model where we're going to insert it. And I'm going to change that by 50 thousandths. We'll change the material here again to uh, our white oak. And we'll go ahead and try it out. So this program, you can build just about anything you want to uh, very rapidly. It's a lot of fun to work with. All right, I think we've got it to a point where we've got that leg uh, set done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna select, gonna select this whole part, and then let's turn it into a group. We'll bring it out here. Rotate it. Bring it over the other side. Okay. Uh, you know, basically the cabinet other than a top is done, but because of time, I think I'm gonna move along uh, quickly. And we'll show next how we can uh, take this cabinet and let's export it and uh, turn it into G-code. Any questions thus far? Okay, so trying to save on some resources here and close some files. We'll bring this one back up. This is what happens when you take that same cabinet and start to change colors and put a top on it. So uh, again, I made it dramatic. It's a little wild looking, but uh, I thought it would be fun just to show you what can what a person can do in Cabinet Sense and SketchUp. So from here, we're ready to export. Up here is our export tool. And all we have to do is click on Run. And then we get a list of the layers that are being exported, drilling, pocketing, and that kind of thing. From here, we go into Aspire. We're going to use a gadget, the XF batch processor. I know you guys use this probably all the time. And we're going to choose our file. Oh, you know, one thing I forgot to tell you is that when we're creating these parts, we're also able to, and I'll just bring this up just briefly, just to show you this cabinet here, when we look at the materials, we have the ability, so I'm gonna click on this. In fact, you can actually see it right here. You see these hash marks here, and those hash marks mean that our material has a good side and a bad side. So if you ever work with material that has, you know, it may be called uh, that it's an A uh, sheet of material, and that both sides are supposed to be A, but I always find that one side is not quite the same as the other. So we're able to specify that in our drawing. And so you can see here that if you look at materials, 
we're able to say that we want the good side in on this cabinet. And so that means that the B side, if it is a B side, is always going to be on the outside. When we do the export then, what we're able to differentiate is it's going to show us that in order to do this three quarter inch thick material, which is part of that case, that we, we want this is good side down. So we'll take this and we'll import it into Vectric. Okay, and we should get the deck and the top. That makes sense because I'm using blind dados. They're going to be machined from the bottom or from the top, actually, with the, with the face of it turned downwards. So what I'm going to do, even though this should be machined as good side down, we'll bring in the other parts, too, and just pretend that both of our sides are, are absolutely the same, that we can't tell them apart. So we'll do a DXF batch processor. And now we'll go choose the other folder where it says good side up. So we'll bring that in. And there's the rest of our parts, the two ends and the shelf, which is also being machined as well. The next thing we're going to do is just go over to gadgets. And we're going to do what's called the cabinet sense toolpath checker. Now the toolpath checker is looking at all of the layers and determining that everything is set up appropriately and uh, applying these uh, toolpaths to the layers. So I'm going to go choose a toolpath template that I have. And it's saying, well, everything is fine, except for you're missing a designated tool that you said that you wanted to use. And so that's true, because I save space for a tool that I sharpen frequently, and it may not always be 3 eighths of an inch thick. So now that we have that tool in there, we can open up our toolpath template, or our toolpath tab, I should say. And here are all of our toolpaths. Now, that's way too many toolpaths for this job. So what we're going to do is we're going to recalculate the toolpaths. And it tells us that there's some toolpaths that weren't used. Now all we have to do is right click over here and we'll delete all the invisible. And this now becomes our toolpath template. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is nest. So we go over to our nesting icon select all of our vectors. And to make this look a little bit more interesting, uh, let's go ahead and make this as if we're doing three of these cabinets at once. We'll apply that. We'll preview. And there we have, looks like it's gonna take a sheet and a half of material. So, and of course, we're nesting it all, uh, all the same time here, even though there is a good side uh, bad, and a, a, I mean, a good side up and a good side down. So I don't know why this bugs me here, but I guess I'll just leave it there. All right, so there we are with our nested parts. We're going to accept that, and now we can bring that toolpath template that we created back into our job. It's going to ask us if, it want, if we want to apply it to all sheets. Yes, we do. Okay, and there we go. This job now is ready to be exported. We can take a look here if we'd like to, just at this one, uh, let's take a look at this one sheet, see what it looks like to run it. Let's preview the visible toolpaths. And there's our parts. So now we can go and save the toolpath as G code. We'll have to click on visible toolpaths to multiple files and group where possible. And that will send out our, uh, whoops, they're not selected though. So we need to select them. There we go. 
And so now it'll send these out and we can uh, have G code ready to manufacture. Any, uh, anyone have any questions or thoughts? Didn't, when you made that, that uh, toolpath template before you nested, didn't you have to save that? I had already saved it, Alvin, but you're sharp, you got a sharp eye. Yeah, you're, you're right. You would save that toolpath. If we were only doing just the one sheet of parts, you know, the, the five parts, I wouldn't need to save it. I could just refresh it when I nested it and it would be fine. But you're right. And that's really kind of a, I don't know, a weakness of the version 11, I believe, or maybe it even started in 10 of Vectric software. It no longer applies the toolpaths automatically. So you have to bring them back into a nested uh, model. And then it asks you, do you want to apply the toolpath uh, to all the sheets? So it didn't used to do that, I think, in version 9 and before, but now it does. Anyone else? Well then, Tracy, I am uh, I'm ready to turn it back to you. Okay. Hey, Michael. Yes. Um, do you have a all your trim always looks so good in your models? Um, is there another extension you use other than the profile builder for that? You say the trim. Looks good. Yes, and I was wondering if you do that with another extension. Yeah, you know, um, I, I just use Profile Builder, and it I always feel like it does a really good job. I think that there's a few moldings every now and then that I don't have uh, fine enough arcs uh, that could be part of it. So, in other words, if I have if the if the radiuses, the, the arcs have too many facets to them, then yeah, you'll see some kind of some lines. They need to be softened. I have had that happen at times, but generally they're really nice and clean. And that's why I think Profile Builder is just something that it's, it's such an excellent tool. Uh, I, again, like I was talking before, you know, we have to conceptualize first, but then we have to sell. And so um, selling is because people can see. And I think people are so used to watching TV and seeing all these magic shows where, you know, you've got a house that you can't even live in. And two weeks later, it's a mansion. Well, so they want to see a little bit of those bells and whistles, at least customer, a lot of the customers that I work with. too. Okay, Michael, thank you. No, you bet. Yeah. All right. Um, let me, this is Tracy. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out how to, I'm not sure where we went to here. I'm going to share my screen. Here we are. And actually I'm going to stop sharing. So it should just put, well, let me just pin me up here. Okay, there we go. Now, the, the one thing I, I wanted to do, I asked Michael if he would show, you know, basically the workflow. So what you saw tonight was, you know, a fairly, in reality, it's a fairly complex project, but you saw how easy it was to come together. So um, I wanted to show you how you can bring in certain elements, modify them very quickly, export that. It's going to export as a DXF in layers. And then you take it to Spire and you nest it and apply your template and there's your G code. So, Michael, how long does it typically um, take you if you design a kitchen for somebody and you're going to out export out all the parts to go from the final design once you got everything done to the G code? How long would it take you? I don't think it takes for certain. I can say it never takes longer than ten minutes, but I really believe it takes only five. Um, it's all pretty quick. You know, my computer's running a little slow today, I can tell, because I probably have so many drawings open. But five minutes is usually about all it takes to do that process. Um, what we did today when we started to uh, bring in the parts, 
you're talking a lot, you're trying to explain, so your workflow probably isn't quite as smooth as when you're working by yourself. Now, also, when you saw the bow front cabinet and it had the legs on it and some of the pieces like that, those were designed in SketchUp. However, you can take the dimensions off those and plug those right into CCAM just like we normally do out of Aspire. We usually draw on Aspire, take those dimensions into CCAM and, and do those legs and things like that. So you would do the, the same thing. The thing that's kind of nice about this, I usually draw on Aspire and it's all 2D. It's very simple. But with SketchUp, you can actually build it in 3D and still get all the dimensions, see what it's really going to look like. You saw the brick molding, and we could take the information right off that and plug it into CCAM and uh, turn that brick molding corner. Uh, you can take those moldings that were on the bottom of that vanity and uh, plug that into Aspire or CCAM Pro, depending on if you're turning or just doing linear cuts. Uh, and so this is kind of a, I would call it a software suite that gives you almost unlimited capabilities. So most people will start, everybody will start with CCAM because it comes with a system for turning. But most people will then step up to either VCar Pro or Aspire. And they're pretty equivalent here. In this case, it doesn't really matter which one you would use. You can do all of this. Uh, and Michael, if I'm mistaken there, you can correct me, but I, this can all be done in VCar Pro. Is that correct? Right. Right. And I believe Cut 2D as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you can do it in, um, you know, uh, there's several ways to do it. A lot of people step up to Sp Aspire simply because it gives you that much more when you're developing carvings or creating elements like that. So between these, um, you know, the, the SketchUp with the Cabinet Sense extension and Aspire and then Conversational Cam, you really got a complete system that you can do about anything you can dream of. Um, the, of course, we haven't even spoken about CCAM Pro, which is our new series where we can actually um, build a project and have all of the components come into it and all of the G-code come into it so it's assembled into one piece. But um, you can see here we're doing it separately. So in this particular case, the way that Mike's done it, Mike would have taken and done the sheet goods on his machine and then used CCAM to develop the, the turning legs and so on, or the square legs and those components. And you would have had separate G codes for each one of those parts. Where again, in CCAM Pro, we would be able to actually combine that all into a single project and have all the parts in there and all the G code. Even if the G code is created in Aspire, it can be brought in as part of the project and assembled totally in there. We'll do more of that. We're doing the CCAM Pro class uh, in the next hour. We're going to start at uh, well, 6 o'clock my time, which is about six, 14 minutes. So if you want to join that class, you, we're going to end, when we end this class, you can then join that other class separately. It's, it's in the email that I sent out to you. So real quickly, I just want to open it up for questions. Anybody have any questions for Michael? Okay, I kind of suspect. I have another question for okay. Michael. Um, the brick molding tool pass how did you create that was that also profile builder i uh, know the brick mold was just done natively in sketchup and when you think about it it's pretty easy just taking a circle tool building a faceted circle with a certain number of sides so i'd already determined how many sides i wanted so we're just creating a circle and then we're extruding it up to the height that we want to build it and basically cutting it into a quarter section and then just stacking and rotating them all the way up to the top. At that point in time, it's absolutely very simple because with the SketchUp tools, as you know, the move, the control move uh, tool, that it just creates them all automatically, as many as you want. But that was really helpful because it, it shows me where I'm going to end and begin that stack of parts, and therefore they're gonna fit nicely into the, the piece of furniture, or the cabinet, whatever we're building. Yeah. And again, that okay. that's okay. Go, oh, you have a still question more? Okay. No, that was good. That answered my question. Thank yeah. you. And again, that's that's what I like about and I, I learned this from Michael, is that we like about SketchUp with the Cabinet Sense extension is that you have the full 3D modeling program 
um, even with it before you put SketchUp in or Cabinet Sense into SketchUp. So you can design all of these extra components just using the, the SketchUp native tools. And then you can apply that to these cabinets that you're building and throw all your sheet goods out into uh, uh, Aspire to do all the nesting and cut the sheet goods. And then the other components, again, you simply take the dimensions off and and uh, put that into like CCAM Pro or whatever program we're using to do the either the moldings or the uh, uh, the turnings and things like that. Tracy, am I mistaken? Isn't there a brick? Uh, I don't know you, what you'd call it a gadget or something like that in CCAM that does the bricks yeah. for you. There is. Um, let me share my screen for, for a second, and I will now. I. To be honest with you, I may not have it in this version of conversational cam. It is an additional uh, piece that you've got to uh, to do. But if we just look at the tool pass index, yeah, I do not have the in this particular version. I do not have the brick molding, and I don't have the thread cutting. Those were optional tool pass that you could put into CCAM Pro, and I, I just don't have them in these right here. Um, and so that that was optional. Now in the new CCAM Pro, um, if we go in here, let's just grab one of the projects real quickly. Uh, let's just grab um, that doesn't really matter any of the practice turning. Okay, that's got the turning center. Now when you come in here and you manage your part, let's just I'm I'm gonna just use this part. So well, let let's go back and create. Let's let's go back into my uh, turning center. I'm gonna manage parts. I'm going to create a new one that's just going to be a sample a brick. Okay, and I'll click OK. And let's say that let's say that it was 20, 26 inches long or whatever, and it's going to be three inches and in, you know square to start with. We'll start with that, and we we'll choose that, and then um, did I save that? To, 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 Sample brick right there. Okay. Now, when I manage the tool pass, you'll notice that if I go into indexing, oh, excuse me, that's importing, I'm sorry, into indexing, brick patterns right there. And so everything that we do in conversational cam, even the extra tool pass that we created are all included in conversational cam pro. And any of the additional tool paths that we're developing will be in here already. You, you'll just be able to insert them in. Where in CCAM, w those were purchased separately. Um, but in here, you, it, the, anything new will just come out for it. But you can use that brick molding uh, pattern right there. And you just select a tool, diameter positions. And you, you can choose whether the brick is just 50% offset or if it's a 33% or a 25%, it'll create a loose spiral or a left spiral, and you can do left hand or right hand spirals, or just have it alternate 50%. So that's all done within this particular tool path. And again, it's in CCAM Pro, it can be added to CCAM. Okay, any other question? Refresh. Right. Oh, go ahead. Refresh. Yeah. Refresh. Refresh my memory on the pricing of uh, SketchUp and uh, Cabinet Sense, please. Okay, and I'll uh, defer this to Michael. He he does this all the time and can tell you exactly what it is. I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah, SketchUp is a is now a subscription. SketchUp Pro, which is the only one that will allow you to use a um, an extension, is two ninety nine a year. Cabinet Sense has three levels. It's also a subscription. It's $25, $50, or $75 a month. It can be turned on and off as a person needs to, depending upon workload or that kind of a situation. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. At some Perfect. point, we don't have the time tonight, but at some point, we'd kind of like to go into the three different levels of the cabinet sense and what comes with each one. But we'll hold that for a separate class where we can spend more time on it. As I understand it, though, Michael, am I mistaken? It seemed like all three packages, 25, 50 and 75, could actually export the DXF. Is that correct? Yes, they can. They're just limited to how much they can export at a time. So if you we're trying to do a kitchen and you were using the $25 version, you'd be doing a lot of exports. So uh, it's the idea was is that you could really get the full 
feeling of the software, even at $25. Um, there are some extra features in the $75 one, like all the connectors that are available. I was going to touch on those tonight, and I guess I forgot, because we can put those cabinets together using connectors, and they could be flat packed. And CabinetSense supports just about every connector that I can think of that's on the market, all the way from Domino's to the new Peanuts connector. Okay. Recommenda recommendation for uh, training. How can you, is there something online or some re recommendations to that? I've heard there's a real good guy from West Oak Studios. <laughs> yeah, okay. That you'd be happy to, they'll be happy to help, especially the uh, legacy guys. So um, that's kind of why I got into this actually is, you know, just sharing back. Uh, to, to you guys, so. Um, but, I, but I'm in. Yeah, we have a we have a full training uh, during the three month trial. I provide six hours of free training, and uh, you can probably ask some of the guys here. I'm very poor timekeeper, so um, I can't tell the difference usually between an hour and two hours. So I usually wear everybody out. They're kind of like, okay, we've had enough. <laughs> so I can vouch for you. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of videos available on SketchUp too for, um, I'm self-taught and it's uh, pretty easy to learn. Yes, you're absolutely right. In fact, the, the SketchUp videos is just a massive library of videos of people who are such good teachers and such good users of SketchUp that it's just a riot to watch them. I'm hoping that someday I'll, I'll be able to start adding, I'm, I am making videos from Kind of learning as I go, and I'd like to be able to do some of the same with Cabinet Sense as well. Though, though Cabinet Sense does have a uh, YouTube channel, a lot of the videos are very old. There are some new ones too that are keeping up with the times, but some of them are are older. Yeah, this is this is um, this is one of the reasons that uh, Legacy has uh, asked Michael to kind of join our training team is because. Cabinet Sense is, is very powerful, and when you apply, when you put it with SketchUp, it just it just is amazing what you can do. Not only cabinets, but everything else that you want to build. So you know we're really happy with that. But the best part of that whole situation is, and the best way to do it is go to Michael's website, WestOakStudios.com, and you can sign up there. If you decide, you know, you can watch some demo videos and kind of see how it's used. But if you really want to get deep into it. You can get the, the three month trial and then Michael has all of that training that comes with it. Um, and there is no better teacher. Uh, he's he's just way beyond anything that I've ever experienced in, in working with any other instructors or teachers. And so you will really this is why we wanted him so badly to be part of this team is because uh, we can see the value of what he has to offer and what he does. Thank you, Tracy. Um, the trial, the three-month trial is $100. That's the only upfront charge that you have with Cabinet Sense is that $100. Uh, you do get a two-week free trial also where you can kick the tires. That's free. That just happens automatically when you download and install the software. You're automatically in the free two-week trial. I would just I would just mention, though, that if you do the trial, don't do it directly from Cabinet Sense because you won't get – uh, what you would get if you sign up at West Oak Studios through Michael. If you do it through his system, it's the same price, but you're going to get, uh, you know, 10 times the value out of it and 10 times the train. Well, more than 10 times. <laughs> you're going to get a lot of training, very, very close training. So yeah. I would highly recommend that. And I just I mentioned that 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 three month subscription, that's the seventy five five dollar package. Uh, and you're getting you're getting it for one hundred bucks. So you're paying thirty three bucks a month, essentially, for the seventy five dollar uh, subscription. Is that correct, Michael? Uh, yeah. And, and just to be clear about the other part of it also, Cabinet Sense is only downloaded from Cabinet Sense. It's not me. You're not, I'm not actually selling it to you. I don't collect any money on that. It's just that when you sign up on my website, that notifies the developer that you want me for a trainer. So that's help to me. That's how you help me is that when you're signing up for my training, uh, that's a, that's a help to me. So. All right, any other questions before we wrap up? We got three minutes. I, I just want to add that as a student, 
you can get SketchUp for $55 a year. And is that the pro version too, do you know? Yes, it is okay, the pro. That, yep. And that's a, yeah, that's a really a bargain. That's excellent. Yeah, you know, years ago, I think it stopped in 2017, we used to be able to use a free version of SketchUp that would allow us to bring in extensions. And that was really great, but that stopped, so. Yeah. Aren't we all students? <laughs> yeah, we are. A student of what? <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Michael, thank you so much for your time and uh, everything you have to offer. I'm going to go ahead and close this class down, and then we will start the next class immediately. So if you want to join us for that, just step over and jump in. All right. Good night, everybody.